Good morning. We're here. Come type us some comments. Let us know who's out there. It is Monday the 11th. This is the start of our next to last week. Next week's our last week. School's almost done. We're almost there. ready for summer. Alicia's on, so Sophia or Casey, or both. Let me know who's there. And usually Sunny and Cora are signing in fast. But they gotta come get their bags still. So let us know who's out there, who's gonna join Sophia. Hi, Deb. Did you have a good Mother's Day? Did everybody have a nice Mother's Day yesterday? You were cold and rainy, or was your rain all done? So let me know. We're doing a flamingo today. Let me stand them up so you can see. This is our flamingo, and let's see. I think it was, we had lots of suggestions for names, but I really liked. It's Casey. Sophia has me. Oh, Sophia's doing music. Very cool. With Miss Beth. Zoom music. Zoom music. Is this with Miss Beth, I bet? I have a friend out there that's doing our project, Sophia. And right now she's doing music Donovan. on Zoom. Hi, Donovan. Hi, Haley. LaPew. Haley LaPew. I've got all these names in my head, and I need to find some faces to put with them. I met... A new person that I've gotten to know their names and his name is Sterling isn't that a cool name and Sterling came with his mom to pick up his bag just so he could see where the studio was so I got to see Sterling last week hi Sterling I think Sterling usually does our projects later in the day hi Casey oh your school's music teachers doing a zoom class that's kind of cool so Casey, is she singing or is this playing instruments? I'll have to find out from Sophia. So we are, oh, I was starting to tell you we had people suggest names for our flamingo. Flamingo? Yeah, for our flamingo here. See our cool flamingo we're going to do today? He's a very pink bird. And we're going to do him not, it kind of looks like he's watercolor, doesn't it? But we're using a water-soluble marker. So this is called doing an ink wash. But this is an ink wash that's with red ink instead of black ink. And I had Sophie's dad sent us a great suggestion. We had lots of suggestions for our flamingo's name. We needed to name him. He needs a name. So we asked people to send a name. We had lots of names sent in. And I loved Sophie's dad who was doing art projects with Sophie while he was stuck at home. But Heritage Jewelers opened back up if you ever are out near Shelter Cove. His, Sophie's dad's back at work, but he sent in the name Francisco the Flamingo. I really like that. So we have now named our little flamingo here Francisco. Patrick and Lydia. Hi, Patrick. Hi, Lydia. Do you like my flamingo? This is so cool. We're doing an ink wash project today. Lydia and Patrick have done a number of ink wash projects with me here at the studio. And this is so cool because I found us a red water soluble ink marker that we're going to use. So this is done like earlier, way back, nine, eight weeks ago when we started classes, we did an ink wash project with our black water soluble markers and we did a dolphin. And then a few weeks ago, we did a pelican. So today we're going to do a flamingo and we're going to use this very, very cool water soluble red marker. So I'm going to see how many people we've got tuned in here. We'll look at Francisco here. This is what we're going to make. Now, every time I always paint something, it always looks like a boy because I raised three boys. So I think Francisco here looks like I would call him a him. If you want yours to be a girl flamingo, could you do that? Yes, you could. We could give it pretty eyelashes. We could give it a little bit more ruffly feathers. This is really, really cool in how we can create feathers with just our, our ink wash. So we're gonna talk about doing that. We're gonna draw them together. 
So if you are getting your supplies out of your bag while we wait for everybody to log on here, it's just a couple minutes after 11, so we're gonna give everybody a couple minutes. You're going to need one of your pieces of watercolor paper today. Now I think in your packet this week, we had two watercolor papers, got one, two watercolor papers, and we had two black papers, and then you had one mixed media paper. So just to double check that you have the white, the correct white paper, one of your white papers had a W right up in the top corner, okay? The W stands for Wednesday. We're gonna use that piece of paper on Wednesday. So make sure that you've got one of the white papers. This is the heavier paper. And we wanna make sure you don't have the one that has a W in the corner, okay? So you might take your papers off the clipboard, double check, you got two of these really thick watercolor papers and we've got one that has a W. So make sure you have the one that doesn't have the W. Okay. And, hey, Charlie, mm -hmm. while you're getting your supplies, I'm going to get some supplies out for my granddaughter. She came to visit me today, Miss Stella May. Here, I'm going to get her some, some pretty markers she can use. I'm going to get her some paper she can use, and she's going to draw along with us. So, how are we doing it? If you got, you need a pencil today, we're going to light, we're going to sketch him on here first. So we get this really cool neck. He's got a really long neck like our egrets and our blue herons that we see. The flamingos have these really cool looking necks, and his neck looks like a backwards S, doesn't it? We've got it curving around and then curving the other way, just like a big backwards S. So we're gonna draw him together. So find your pencil. Hi, Bay. Oh, that's right, Bay's back. Hi, Bay, I missed you. I missed you for a long time, but I missed you knowing you weren't out there. Hi, Elizabeth. We have a couple of Elizabeths. Is this Elizabeth Ross? Eliz Elizabeth Wayne Scott. Hi, Elizabeth. And I think we have a third Elizabeth. This is a, a, a popular time for Elizabeth. And I saw Elizabeth Wainscott when, and Elizabeth's been here for summer camp before. That's why you looked familiar to me, Elizabeth. So we're going to make our flamingo your lead a pencil and grab your little white eraser. My little white eraser's getting pretty small. I'll have to get myself a new one. So find yourself a pencil and make sure you got your little white eraser. We're going to draw very lightly um, so we don't want our ugly pencil line showing through our very cool ink wash. Look at all the different shades. I just love ink wash. Look at all the different shades we get. He looks so three-dimensional. We get all these really soft little light shades of red. And look at all his big feathers down here. This is going to be fun to do. So get your eraser and get your pencil. You need to make sure you got a piece of watercolor paper. We want to make sure that your paper does not have a W. So turn it over, check both sides, make sure you're not using the piece of paper that has a W. It's up in this top corner. Okay. So make sure you get your white paper, make sure it does not have a W on it. That's for our Wednesday project. Tomorrow we're going to use a piece of black paper. So get your watercolor paper out and then we need to get our red felt tip marker that was in your bag, which I do need one of those, Mr. Joey. So find that little skinny red flare marker that was in there. We have to look for these markers special. Oh yeah, no, don't throw it to me, Mr. Jelly. I have a lousy catcher. These are water soluble markers. It is hard anymore to find a marker that is water soluble because most markers are made to be permanent so that when you write something, it doesn't get smudged off, it can't get wiped off, it can't bleed and run. So most markers that you use nowadays, unless they're kids Crayola markers that are washable, are permanent. Sharpies are all permanent. So we look particularly for these Papermate flare markers. They're water soluble. And I was so excited when I found they came in red. So we're gonna use this red one. It kind of looks pinkish, orangish, coral color. 
but it's going to come out a nice red and it's going to give us all these perfect colors for our flamingo. So let me see how many we've got. Have most people got signed on, Mr. Mark? Got everybody on? We ready to go? You guys found your paper? Got your pencil? Got your eraser? I'm going to have Mr. Joey do we move. We're using our new camera. So I'm checking do we move the camera or not? We do still move the camera. Okay. We're gonna, I've got to move my stool. I always have to move my stool so Mr. Joey can get all set. And we're going to get ready to draw this flamingo. Uh, let's see. i got to figure out. Mr. Joey always lets me know if I'm in the right spot. Oh, the other thing you might grab today is your colored pencils. I decided after I made my flamingo I wanted just a little bit of color like this guy behind him. So I used my colored pencils, used one of my blue colored pencils. If you had a blue crayon, that would work. If you had a blue marker, you could do that. I don't really want a lot of color in the background because I think his cool ink wash color looks the best. So if you got your colored pencils handy, I think everybody should have colored pencils. If you didn't have them from before, they went into your bag this Saturday. So grab your colored pencils because we're gonna use the blue one. But we're gonna wait and do that after we're all done. Okay, Mr. Joey's trying to debate if we've got cords set. Okay, we got your flamingo. Can we see everything really good here, Mr. Joey? Yes. Okay, Mr. Joey's telling me to hurry up. Okay, I got my pencil. I'm going to have you guys sketch really lightly, but I'm gonna press a little harder so you can see the lines, okay? First thing we're going to do is figure out how we can fit him on here because this is really cool to see his really cool feathers. They get these nice little round bodies. We don't see part of him because he runs right off the paper. I like compositions that run off the paper. So we want room to get all these really cool feathers in down here. We want room to see this really pretty long regal neck of his. So we want to start out and make sure we don't run out of room to fit everything. So what I want you to do is find about the middle of your paper. I would say that's about the middle of my paper, don't you think, where I laid my pencil down here? So if you look for about the middle of your paper, look at what hits right around the middle of my paper. This is where, if I think of the middle of my paper here, this is where his little beak turns its corner. Flamingos have these really funny beaks, kind of like a parrot. They come down and then they curve down. And it hits just about the middle of my paper. So I'm going to keep that in mind while I'm drawing, that this is where I want his beak to turn its corner. And what we're going to do is start by giving us this nice curve up here. We're going to do the curve on the top of his head here. It's not a very sharp, big curve. And I want you to look. We want to leave about this much space on our paper over here. And our curve is going to have a little bit of space left on this side too. We're going to think of putting this line in first the curve on the top of his head. And we're going to leave ourselves some space on this side and then a little space on this side. I want the top of his head to come almost to the top of the paper. So that gives me plenty of room to get all this nice part in that I want to draw. So I'm going to come up here to the top of my paper. I want to leave about this much space. And we're going to draw from up here, not his forehead, but up here. And I'm going to come in about that much space, okay? And I'm going to draw, remember, I'm going to press a little harder so you can see my lines. I'm going to draw a curve just like this. So it's almost like just a little bit of a frown. We don't want to make a real big circle curve. But we're going to make just the littlest bit of curve like a frown. I want to leave a lot of space over here. And I've left a little bit of space over here. Okay? So get your curve on the top of his head. And then we're going to work our way down this side of them. So here's where my curve stopped when I look at the picture. Now his forehead's going to turn and go down. Does it go straight down? If it went straight down, it would look like this. Straight up and down. Does his forehead go straight up and down? No. So it doesn't angle out a lot, but it angles just a little bit. So I'm going to go from here 
and I'm not going to go straight down. I'm going to go out just a little bit. Just a little ways down. Here's the middle of my paper, remember? So I'm about a quarter of the way down my paper. I'm about halfway to the middle of my paper. So I gave the, his forehead comes down just like going down a very, 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 very steep roller coaster here. Okay? Now we're going to do his beak. His beak follows that same kind of almost straight down, curves out just a little bit, comes to a corner, and then comes back. It almost looks like a boomerang, doesn't it? Looks like a big, wide corner. So here's the middle of my paper. Let's find the middle of your paper right along in here. So I'm actually going to give myself a little dot right there. Whoops, can you see my dot? That's about the middle of my paper, so that's my guideline. I'm going to come here, and I'm going to start with this diagonal line going down for his beak. And right before I get to that halfway dot I gave myself, I'm going to turn the corner. Because his little turn of his beak's just above the corner. And then we're going to come back this way. So this part's about the same as this part. I got this part of his beak, and it's about the same as that part of his beak. So I came on down from his forehead, turned a corner. I don't want a sharp corner. We don't want his beak to curl back in so much he wouldn't be able to eat. Okay? So we got this beak coming out here, kind of to the middle of your paper, and then turn and come back this way a little bit. So we diagonal that way, and then we diagonal this way. Now look at the, the end of his beak. It's almost a point, but it's got a little bit of a curve to it. Now here's the special part I want you to pay attention to on his beak. His beak, here's this corner we just made. If I put my pencil down, look where I start curving his beak up. Way below that. Okay, so think about that. There's the corner. Here's my corner. So I'm going to turn, make a little bit of a curve at the bottom come up just like I'm making a V here. But I'm only going to come about halfway up to where the corner of his beak is. When I get about halfway up, if I went all the way up, I'd be right, right here across from the corner. But I'm going to turn like a curve like this till I come right across from there. So I'm going to turn in a curve and come up like that. This almost looks like a big rectangle in his beak here. Okay, so we took our big diagonal down here, made a corner of his beak. I'm going to erase my little dot I gave myself for the center. Okay, I made a corner in the center of my paper, came down here. Now he looks like a V at the bottom of his beak, doesn't he? But don't come all the way up to this corner, way down here, halfway to the corner. I turned and made a curve, come back up this way. We're going parallel to this line. See this part of his beak? Matches this part of his beak. So we kind of created a big rectangle on his beak there. Okay, how are you guys doing? Did we get a cool looking beak? We're gonna come back up here where his head meets his beak. So it kind of makes an upside down V up here. This is his nice feathers. Kind of make a little curve over the top of his beak here just like this. And then we're going to put his little round eyeball in there. So we're going to draw a little round eyeball. Flamingos don't have very big eyes. So we can make a little round circle right there. It doesn't have to be very big. And then what I want to do is make this little curve right down to the bottom of his beak. Curve right down there to match up with his beak. Okay, so we got an eyeball on here. We got his beak anchored into his head here. Now comes the fun part. We're going to create this neck that makes this kind of backwards S, doesn't it? We're going to start on the inside here and draw this line first. Bump and jump over the beak and go right down here. So, his we don't want his neck to get too skinny. Look how thick his neck is. And it stays about the same thickness all the way down. Like a really big, thick snake. Okay? So we're going to start down here where his beak is. And I'm going to come almost straight up a diagonal here. 
Okay, so I'm going to come from down here, almost the same kind of curve as this beak, and I'm going to come up to about the middle of my paper. Here's about the middle of my paper, right? So I want to come right back up that same diagonal that I had going with his beak here, till we're right, maybe just a little past the middle of the paper. Now, don't get too close here. We don't want his neck to be too skinny. I might even make mine stay down just a little bit more. Don't let his neck get too skinny. Flamingos have a pretty thick neck here. Okay. Now I'm going to imagine that I turn a corner and I'm going to turn this corner here and I'm going to go this way, down the hill this way. And look, we want his beak to end up just above the, I mean, we want his neck to end up just above the bottom of his beak. It's kind of hard to say. His neck is going to end up just above the bottom of his beak. So we turn a little corner here and we go down this nice little curving hill till I get near the bottom of his beak. I'm going to bump into the bottom of his beak there. So I went around a big curve, like we're making a, a U-turn on the road, going around a curve in the mountain, and then down the hill until I get just near the bottom of his beak. I bump into his beak, take my pencil up and keep going on the other side. And on this side, we're going to curve and go almost straight down. Okay. So on the other side of the beak here, I'm going to curve and I'm going to make that line go kind of straight down to the bottom of the paper. Boom. So I made a nice big circle around here. Went down the hill going this way till I got ran into the bottom of his beak. Bump into the bottom of his beak, jump over and keep going. We're going to curve and we're going to curve and go take that line straight down right off the bottom of your paper there. Is he starting to look like a flamingo? Starting to, isn't he? Okay, now this is our easy line. We want to make a copycat line. We want to keep it the same distance from that line all the way down till we get here. So I'm just going to copy this line, but it's going to be way out here. I'm going to keep going around and around. I'm going to follow where that line's going right till I get down to here. So my did my neck stay the same width? So double check yourself after you make this line. Come back here and look. Make sure your neck doesn't get too skinny in one spot or get too fat. We don't want the flamingo to look like he swallowed a big egg and made a big bulge in the middle of his neck. So follow your line till we get down to about here. This is where over here we curved and went straight down. We don't want to go straight down because we want to see his nice big fluffy feathers on his back. So we're going to go straight down, but only about halfway. And then we're going to make a real sharp U-turn here. So I'm going to go straight down, just like I'm following here. But I'm only going to get about halfway down there. And I'm going to make a really sharp little U-turn. Kind of like we just made a big letter J. And then this side of the letter J comes up and we're thinking of making a big circle. If we could see the rest of the fling, flamingo's body, his body makes like a big circle back here with all these flowing feathers. So we're gonna come up and make it curve like we got part of a big circle coming here. Imagine you got a big circle here, okay? I can look around, his neck stayed pretty good, see if we need to adjust. I feel like he gets a little skinny in here, so I might I might bring my line out like this just a little bit. Nope, then his neck gets a little fat. So I'll still come up a little bit. Okay. So look, double check your neck in all its places there. Make sure nothing looks too skinny. Bring this up there. There, he got a little better right there. Okay, so check your neck, make sure he stays nice and the same thickness all the way down to here. Then he's going to get a little wider and he gets this big curve here, like we got a quarter of a circle. Like imagine you had a pizza, pot piece, a pizza pie 
and we cut it into quarters. Here's a fourth of our pizza pie here. Okay, so we got a good part blocked in here. The only thing we didn't block in is, is we need to look at his beak here. And if you look at his beak, see how I've put that black part into his beak? We want to divide his beak because flamingos have this white beak, gets a little bit of pink shadow on it maybe, but they got this black tip on the bottom of their beak. But it's kind of funny, we imagine his beak, we're gonna divide it in half. So imagine we come down here at the bottom of his beak and we want to divide it in half. And we're gonna divide it in half We're gonna divide it in half. We're gonna come up here and we're gonna go this way. We're not gonna come all the way up though. So come down here to the bottom of his beak and really lightly, let's see if we can divide it in half. I'm gonna come up like this and then I'm gonna come up the middle like this. Okay, so I kind of divided his beak in half, half here and half here. And then when I come out, remember where we turned the corner with his beak? We get just a little bit of black on there, so I'm gonna come just above the corner and I'm gonna pull it down here and then I'm gonna pull this up here. So he kind of gets this split here. We're gonna go down to the little V. We're gonna come up to where we just drew our middle line here. So he gets this little split in his beak here that's gonna stay white. And then we're gonna come over here. Remember when we came up and then we started the curve, came up to here and then started a curve. Right from there, I wanna make a diagonal. I wanna go across here. So this almost lines up with this. But then I'm gonna turn and come up and meet this little point I made here. So this is gonna be this nice black beak here. Okay, so that kind of gives us our look of our flamingo. What I want you to do is make sure you got your pencil lines where you want them. And then you can take your eraser like this and very lightly, don't press hard. I'm just gonna lightly go over my pencil lines a little bit so they lighten up. That way they won't show through my ink wash too much. So if you got any extra lines where you changed a line or moved a line, erase any extra lines and then go over our lines really lightly Go over them real lightly like that. Okay, we get all these eraser fuzzies, we can brush those off. And we're ready to do our ink wash. Okay, I'm gonna brush all my fuzzies off. Now you could be nice, not brush all your fuzzies on mom's floor. Okay, can you still see my pencil lines okay? Did everybody find their red pens that were in their activity bags? Okay, we're gonna start with the red pen. And we use it just like the Sharpie. What we're gonna do is go over our pencil lines. But since the flamingo's lines, they're made up of lots of little feathers, right? He's got lots of feathers, not just one solid line on him. So when I make my lines, I'm gonna go over this part. I'm gonna come up here on his forehead. But then as I come around, I might kind of make lots of little lines like this. Hello. Going over, instead of just making one single line going over the pencil like this, Instead of doing a single line like this to go over our pencil lines, I can come along and kind of zigzag back and forth like this. So I'm kind of like coloring in my line like this. So back and forth, right over my pencil line like this. Can you guys see how I'm zigzagging on my pencil line? 
and it kind of makes the edge of his neck feel like it's feathery instead of just a straight line. Did you see how to do that? I'm going to do it again. I'm going to go over this pencil line around his beak. But then I'm going to start going back and forth like this. I want it to stay right on the pencil line. So my zigzags back and forth are going pretty horizontal. See how we're zigzagging across our pencil line? There we go. Right down to his beak. I want to stop where his beak is. So it kind of got his neck in here. Let's get the front part of his body here too. So we'll zigzag on this pencil line. So I'm really just kind of making a really thick pencil line. I can zigzag down this side of his neck a little bit. Okay. Now before I come work on these feathers, I'm gonna come back up here and look at where does he have shadows. Where do we get the most shadows on our flamingo? We get some shadows down here, underneath where his cheek would be, and a, just a little bit coming up here, and then right in this bend of his neck, we get a lot of shadow, don't we? And down here we get some more shadow. But here's where we get a lot of shadow, in this bend of his neck, right here, this part. So to create some shadow in here, we want to put more ink. On. The more water soluble ink we put on here, the darker we get the red. So I don't want to just color in a patch. Can you very faintly see my lines on here? Let's see if Mr. Joey can zoom in enough. Underneath my shadow of reds and pinks, do you see the little lines there? So we want to add some more ink on here, but we want to do it like it was little feathers. So I'm going to draw short little lines like this. I'm leaving white space in between them. I don't want to just color it in. And I'm making them go the directions his feathers would be growing, right? Right here we wouldn't have feathers going this way, right? They're going to go the direction of his neck. So I'm going to come in here and I'm just drawing some short little lines close to each other, but I'm leaving a little bit of white space. I'm just going to add a few little extra lines in here. That's going to create a nice shadow. So that creates a nice shadow. As his neck turns this way, the sun's going to get on it, so it won't have as much shadow there. Looks like I get a little shadow under his eye and near the bottom of his beak, too. So we're going to put a little bit of shadow. Coming right out, almost like spokes on a bicycle, right around his eye like this. And then I'm just going to bring some shadow down here. Now his feathers will be growing this way down here, right? As we get to the bottom of his head. Short little lines. Leave some white space between your short little lines. But let's And let's put a little bit more coming. feathers coming this way too. I don't want to come all the way back here. We want to leave a little bit of white space in here. So we're just going to get a few little feathers right down here by the bottom of his cheek. Should have put a few little extra feathers right here on that part. Any place else you see a lot of shadow on him? We would move down here and we see some more shadow as his neck bends to his back here, don't we? So let's come down here and we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to add some short little lines where we want to get a little bit of shadow in here. My little lines are close to each other. I see a little bit of white space, but not a lot. Okay. So we've got our shadow a little bit here. We've got our shadow a little bit here. we got our shadow in the bend of the neck here. Get a little bit in this bend here. Pull a little bit coming up here. Okay. And then look at his body here. I get some longer lines, don't I, here? Because these are his long feathers on the back of his body. But see how they go in a curve? They go this. All my long lines go up and curve like this. Just like we're feeling his round body here. 
So I definitely get some more look of feathers on his back. He gets longer feathers on his back than his neck. So I'm gonna come up here with some long strokes here. Instead of doing my short zigzags on the back of his body, I'm gonna do some long ones. And I'm gonna come under here and do some long ones there. And under there and do some long ones there. And then I want to go like this. I wanna come this curve and curve this way, curve and curve this way. These are my guidelines, just so I remember what direction we want these feathers to curve like this, okay? So I'm gonna come in here and right around the bend, I'm gonna do a lot of little curves here. And I can make longer lines. See how my lines are a little longer? But I'm making them curve the direction of his body. Now, I've got a bunch of lines close together, and then I leave some white space. Bunch of lines close together, and leave some white space in between. We don't want to color him all in with the marker. We just want to give some spots where we're going to get a little bit more ink on here so he can get a little bit more color on him. So leave white space in between, color in some nice long lines. Okay, we got some nice long feathers going here. He gets some nice pretty feathers on his back. I'm just gonna put some in the middle here. I wanna give the illusion with my feathers here that his body comes right around like this, okay? So we got long feathers here, got a little bit of shadow in the bend here, got a little bit of shadow here, got some shadow up in here. Where is the other place that we see some more red that we haven't put? We're gonna put a little shadow on the bottom half of his beak here. It's got a little shadow I wanna put here. So I'm going to put just a little bit of red right in this little empty spot here. So I can add a little bit. I'm gonna let it come to a little point there. Okay. And maybe I'll do just a little bit of red here. A little bit of red line that runs parallel to the beak. We're gonna put the black on at the very end. I'll do a little bit of red line that comes right up here by his eye. Mimics that little curve there and comes right down. Kind of like a couple little lightning bolts there. Okay. So how are you doing? Give me some thumbs up if you've got your red marker all done. Everybody got some red marker on? Are we all done using the red marker? Give me some thumbs up. You gotta let Mr. Mark on the computer know. Thumbs up, are we good? Do we need a little extra time with the red marker? Uh, the other thing we need today is our round brush. So I'm gonna have Mr. Joey grab me a round brush and a cup of water. The green brush is over there. So everybody should have a round brush and then Mr. Mark says everybody's giving thumbs up, so we're good. Mr. Joey's gonna get me a cup of water. You're looking for your round brush like this. Everybody should have a round brush from either a, a previous week we've done or I think everybody had a round brush with them. I don't think we had to pass out any more round brushes. I got my cup of water. This is Coleman's cup from summer camp. And you might want a paper towel. Sorry, Mr. Joey, he's gonna grab you a paper towel. I just forgot to put all kinds of things on my table today, didn't I? So we're gonna get yourself a paper towel because the key thing with ink wash, we're not using it like paint. We're wanting to give just a hint of the painted look. So we don't wanna use a bunch of water. It's real important when you're doing ink wash not to use too much water but we also need to work kind of quickly because we don't wanna see harsh lines. See how this 
fades so nicely from the red to the darker pink to the lighter pink. And you just don't see where one color stops and another starts. So we want to work a little quickly, but you don't want to have too much water on your brush. So what we're going to do is put your water, brush in the water, let it soak up and get wet. Okay. Then when you pull your brush out of the water, you want to tap it on the edge of the cup. Tap, tap, tap. We don't want too much water on there. If it feels really drippy still, you can even tap it once on the paper towel. But tap it on the side like this. Get most of the water out. And when you do an ink wash, for those of you that haven't done this before, the water acts like a magnet. As soon as it gets near the ink, it's going to make the ink run. So we don't want to go right through the line because we don't want the red to go into the sky. So we're going to start right in a corner. I'm going to ease the corner of my brush right up to the ink wash there. And I'm going to keep it right on this side of my line. And it's going to start giving me some nice pink color. Okay. I'm going to dip the tip in the water, tap it again, and I'm going to go right up to the edge of the ink there. And see how I'm starting to get this nice little pink color coming off? You have to dip your brush again every time you do it. I'm going to turn my paper this way just so Miss Jenny can see better. I want to go right up to the edge of the ink, but I don't want to go through it because I don't want my pink going on the other side. And I can keep wiggling it right out so my color fades right out there. Dip your brush again and come up to the next line. How are we doing, Mr. Joey? What? Okay, see I'm getting these really pretty pink colors. You gotta dip your brush each time, tap it just once. We want to keep some water on the brush, but not too much. We're gonna keep going right along this outside edge. Dip the brush again, tap it one time. Go right up against your red lines, and it's gonna pull some of this nice faint pink color. Dip a brush again, tap it one time. Let it come this way. Look at that. See all this pink on my brush and I can bring it down like this onto his neck. Dip the brush, tap it one time. Come around this way. Ooh, look at all this wonderful pink color I'm getting. And I can pull it right out onto his neck like this. We don't want it to look like he's got just a pink line around the outside of his neck. So we definitely want to make sure we pull the pink color and pull it and pull it all the way in here. And tip it one more time, tap it one more time. We're going to come right down this back side and we're going to stop when we get down in the corner here. Look at this pretty pink color and I pull it all the way out across his neck like that. Dip your brush again, tap it one time. And here we go, pulling all this pretty pink color across his neck. Now, before I get right down into that, I'm going to come back up here to the top. Dip my brush one time, tap it just one time, and I'm going to come into this corner where I put all this ink. And I'm going to get this nice and watered down. I'm going to go right around his eye. I don't want to go into his eye. And look at all this red color I've got. But I don't want a harsh line like that, so I'm going to rinse all the red out of my brush. Tap it dry. Tap it, tap it, tap it come right there while that's still wet and I can go right on the edge while that's still wet and pull it out just a little bit so it'll blend into the rest of his head. So we want that nice line to blend in. See how we got blended in there? Okay, tap it again. Let's come in and get this really dark shadow on his neck here. Ooh, that looks pretty. And again, I don't want his dark shadow to look like a stripe on him. So I rinse the red out, tap my brush, and come out here and pull on the edge of that so it can blend in. You gotta, you gotta blend it while it's wet. Oh, look at these pretty colors I'm getting. Notice how I've just left some of the white paper. 
because we really want some white showing on our flamingo. Okay, now we're going to keep going right down this other side of his neck. Tap it off there one time. Pull it along here, get some of this ink wash to blend. Get some nice pink color on this side of his neck. Dip it, tap it just one time. Come right along here and blend this pink out on the front of his neck there. Oh, he's looking cool. Look how pretty and pink he's looking. Okay. Dip it again. Tap it just one time. And let's do this front of his neck down here across from his belly. So we're going to go right along there like that. And I want to get right up here by his neck. I'm trying to be very careful right by his beak. Don't really want to get his beak wet because I'm going to use my regular permanent marker on there, my Sharpie. I don't want the paper too wet for my Sharpie to draw on. Okay, so I got the front edge of his neck there. He's looking really pink. My flamingo's looking very pink. Is your flamingo looking pink? It looks pretty cool. I like how parts of him are darker and parts of him are lighter where I left some of the white paper showing. Let's come over here and do his body. I'm going to start from the back here with his body. Get all these nice, wonderful red feathers on his body here. And I'm going to make my brush strokes follow the direction of the feathers. Is it okay to leave some of the white paper showing on his body? Yep. Rinse that water right over there. Get these really pretty feathers all filled in here. Dip your brush once, tap it off. Get this little body all filled in here. Dip your brush again. As soon as it starts not to blend as easily, you need to dip your brush. We dip our brush a lot in the water when we're doing ink wash. Lots and lots and lots of dips. Okay. Come around like this. Dip it again. Let's get the top of his body here. Where I put all these nice feathers up in here. Now, got all our dark shadow we were going to do right there. Where his body bends. So I'm going to take my brush. I'm going to come in with my wet. Ooh, look at that nice deep dark shadow in the bend of his neck here. And remember, I don't want it to be a line, so rinse off. Bring some more water out here while it's still wet. So we can blend that nice shadow into the rest of his body. And bring some of this pink over from here. There we go. Now I don't see any harsh lines, no stripes on him. He looks really, really pretty. So that's all I need to do with my brush with the ink. Oops, nope, we need to get his beak. Remember how, why we, how we gave him some pink shadow on his beak? So let's come tap your brush a bunch so we don't have too much water on it. I'm going to turn mine a little bit. Is that okay, Mr. Joey? So I can see what I'm painting. And we want to go right over this. Nice pink shadow we gave on the beak. But we want to blend it out a little bit. Right down to the pencil lines where you're going to put your black. Okay. And I'm going to rinse off, pat it dry, pat it on my paper towel one time. There we go. Pat it on the paper towel. And I want to come and blend this outside edge there. So we can give a little bit of this pinky color coming right through. We want to get this one blended in and this one blended in. Dap, tap your brush again. One pat on the paper towel. Get this blended in a little bit. That's going to come right up here by his eye. There we go. Okay, now we got that little bit of pink shadow on the top of his beak there. And then you can leave your brush in there because what we're going to do is use our Sharpie and color in his beak 
get this nice black color on his beak so I can outline my pencil line here. I can outline this side up to here. And I'm gonna go right up this line where his beak comes up to his head. Right up this side where his beak comes up to his head. And remember how we gave ourselves this line up the middle like this? And then we get these kind of funny zigzags. So instead of painting the whole bottom of his beak black, I'm going to zigzag up like this. Then I'm going to go down and up right over that corner part there. That's the part of his beak we're going to make black. So I can just lay my Sharpie kind of on its side and fill in his beak here. So see if you can fill his beak in. I'm kind of laying my Sharpie on its side. So it kind of covers a little faster for me there. And I put this little corner. Okay, are you getting your beak filled in? Fill this part in up here. And what about the bottom half of this beak? It needs to be black too, doesn't it? So I'm going to fill in down here. Might leave just the tiniest little hint. I put a little bit of a, see a little bit of white in between my beak here. There we go. I let just a little little bit of white show in between his beak there. If you don't, that's okay. I don't think I did on my other one. And how about if we take the Sharpie and give our flamingo just a little round pupil in the middle. I'm going to only color in half the pupil and leave the other half white because the Sharpie tends to soak into the paper. So I only colored in half his pupil, but see how the Sharpie soaked in and it just left the tiniest little bit of white. <laughs> now let's put an outline around his eye just so we can see it a little easier. There we go. And now's where we can use some of those colored pencils that you've got. I have my set of colored pencils here and I want to give my flamingo a little bit of color. I used yellow. You could give him a blue eye if you wanted, or an orange eye, or a red eye, whichever color you want. I'm going to put a little bit of yellow around his pupil so he gets a little color on his eye. Okay. And then I'm going to use my blue. And I don't want a really dark sky all the way behind him because I want him to really pop in the middle here. So what I'm going to do is take my blue and I'm going to use my blue. I could even use this light blue. Maybe I'll use this light blue. I want his sky to be very light. I don't want it to detract from my bird. So take your light blue here and what you can do is lay the colored pencil on its side and in the corners if we lay the colored pencil on its side like this I'm not even coloring with its point. I'm just laying it on its side. And I'm putting, I'm pressing a little hard down here in the corners. And then I'm gonna loosen my grip and press lightly as it comes up the sides. So it's gonna get really light up here near the pelican. A little darker out here at the edges. Flamingo. I'm, oh, I called it a pelican, flamingo. We can press a little darker down here you don't even have to get right up to the edge of the pelican. Pelican. You don't have to get to the edge of the flamingo. And then as we come up, we're going to press lighter. Don't press as hard. Lighten. You loosen the grip on your pencil. Don't press so hard. Press lighter and lighter and lighter. And we can have the darkest part down near the bottom here. And we'll put a little darker up near the top. There we go. So in here, I'm gonna just press really lightly just to give a little hint of a sky back there. Just a little hint. I don't even have to fill it all in. 
Okay, I can color both ways because I don't really want to see lines in my sky. So it doesn't matter which direction. If you lay the pencil on its side, we won't get a lot of sharp lines. I'm going to make it a little darker out here at the edges of my paper. A little darker at the edges and a little lighter as it comes towards the fl flamingo. I got it right, flamingo. Okay, so press a little darker out here at the edges and up in this corner. Now, do I want to leave my blue sky just like that? That looks like I put a, a stripe in the sky, doesn't it? So I do want to press lighter as it comes down towards my flamingo. I don't really want to see stripes in the sky, so I want to fill it in. You just don't have to press very hard. We're just trying to give the impression of a little bit of background here, a little bit of sky. So just press lightly and give just the littlest hint of blue sky back here. The only place we're pressing hard is out here at the edges. And we press really lightly as we get near the flamingo. Okay. So you're getting a little hint of sky there. How did your flamingo turn out? Does it look like a Francisco? Or, you know what we could do if we wanted to, to be... Let's see, maybe Francisco had a sister. So we would call her Francesca. How about Francesca? So I could take my Sharpie. We'll give, we'll give this flamingo some eyelashes. So we'll give her a few little eyelashes. So Francisco here can have a sister, Francesca. So I got my sister over here. Put a little bit of hint of sky, just so it kind of finishes the background around our flamingo. And we have a pair of flamingos sitting here. How'd your flamingo turn out? Need to make sure, oh, here's one thing we, we missed on our flamingo. See this little oval, a very, 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 very skinny oval. It's almost just like a line. That's our flamingo's nostril. So it's gonna go up here in this part. Let's give him just start with just a line it can just be a little wider line there that's our that's our flamingo's nostril there we go now yeah, i like how my flamingo turned out how did yours turn out be sure and take some pictures for us take a few pictures show me tell me what your flamingo's name is because when you finish your flamingo you gotta name him him or her, maybe it's a girl flamingo. So take some pictures, be sure and tag us, otherwise I don't see your pictures. So when you take a picture and you post it, you have to put at Idea Studio, otherwise I don't get to see your pictures. So tag some pictures for me. Sterling, I wanna see how yours turned out, and Elizabeth, and my other Elizabeth, and all my kids that I have met picking up bags, show me your flamingos and tell me what you named your flamingo. We should have some really cool names. I'll get Mr. Mark to post them for you. We'll, we'll have a whole herd, flock, flock. It should be a flock of flamingos, right? We'll have a whole flock of flamingos. We might have some, some Elizabeth flamingos. We might have a Susie Q flamingo. We might have a Joe flamingo. Just tell me what your flamingo's name is and post a picture and be sure and tag us at Idea Studio. Next week's going to be our last week. We have one more week after this and we have some really cool projects left to do. So if you haven't got your bag yet for this week, you can still order them. We'll get them put out on the table and these videos always go up on our Facebook page so you can catch up with us. And then go ahead and order your bags for next week because that'll be our last week. So tag us at Idea Studio and tell me your flamingo's name and tell me if it's a girl or a boy. And we'll see you tomorrow. Bye.